Cool Runnings, inspirational comedy about the Jamaican bobsled team and how they defined all odds by competing in the Winter Olympics, despite coming from a warm tropical climate. Released in 1993, it follows Jamaican sprinter Doris Bannock, played by Leon Robinson, who dreams of competing in the 100 meters at the Olympics. But after his dreams are dashed, he doesn't lose sight of catching some of that Olympic glory by coming up with the idea of forming the Jamaican bobsled team for the Winter Olympics. He manages to get a team together along with a coach in the form of a disgraced former bobsled medalist Irv Blitzer, played by John Candy, where the newly formed Jamaican team have to learn about bobsleighing and cold temperatures with hilarious consequences, where they qualify for the Winter Olympics, but must overcome people not believing in them and bullies in this inspirational comedy classic. So saddle up as we look into 10 things that you didn't know about Cool Runnings. An awe-inspiring movie about going against all odds, not to mention being John Candy's final film. So, let's check it out. Number 10, not entirely, but sort of based on a true story. Cool Runnings is indeed based on the true event of the formation of the Jamaican national bobsled team who joined the 1988 Winter Olympics in Calgary, Canada. The team was admired as being an underdog team on the account that the Winter Olympics focuses on cold weather sports and Jamaica is a tropical climate. Although many accounts of the movie did happen in real life, such as beating the Swiss team in the four-man event, and the crash at the end which prevented the Jamaican team from proceeding further, other than that, Cool Runnings is very much loosely based on the true events. For example, the team seen in the movie were fictional characters not based on the actual real-life Jamaican bobsled team. The team's real-life coach has also stated that unlike Cool Runnings where the Jamaican bobsleigh team was met with hostility at the Winter Olympics, in real life the team was embraced with open arms, as people actually found the idea of a Jamaican team to be fascinating. And the crash scene at the end of the movie wasn't caused by faulty mechanics, but the bobsled was going too fast, as well as making a turn that was too high. And the team didn't carry the bobsled with the crowd clapping in unison, but rather they walked with the bobsled, while the crowd just cheered sporadically. The Jamaican bobsled team would go on to compete in the Winter Olympics in 1992, 1994, 1998, 2002, 2014, and a women bobsled team debuted in 2018. Number 9, Cool Runnings was going to be a serious sports movie. When the idea was conceived about making a movie based on the Jamaican bobsleigh team, it was originally less tongue-in-cheek without the comedy and gags, but more of a serious, realistic movie. The original title of the movie was Blue Miger, which is a Jamaican slang for in a state of great distress and starvation. The movie was also to be distributed by Columbia Pictures. The fact that the original script was less of a comedy and more serious makes me wonder if the original script was more in line with the real-life events rather than being a dramatization. National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation director, Jeremiah Chechik, was attached to direct, but during the early days of production, he left the project to direct the romantic comedy Benny and June instead. So with Jeremiah Chechik gone, the search was now on to find a replacement director for Cool Runnings or as it was known back then, Blue Miger. Number eight, the search for a director. After Chechik left the production, Poltergeist 2 director Brian Gibson came on board to direct Cool Runnings, but he also left the project choosing to direct the Tina Turner biopic What's Love Got To Do With It Instead. Then director John Turtletub came on board to direct Cool Runnings. Turtletub had previously directed Three Ninjas and in later years would also go on to direct the National Treasure movies and The Meg. It was Turtle Tip who insisted that more humor should be brought into the script. Leon Robinson, who played Darius, said that the script had problems and it just wasn't working and it wasn't funny. 
It seems that making the script more of a comedy as well as being more tongue-in-cheek spruced up the script and got everyone more enthusiastic about Cool Runnings. How about I beat your butt right now? How about I draw a line down the middle of your head so it looks like a butt? However, the production hit another setback, as some German financiers who were helping to back the project then dropped out, which put the production to a halt. Number 7. Then Disney Came to the Rescue When Columbia Pictures brought the rights to the story of the Jamaican bobsleigh team to turn into a movie, producer and studio executive Dawn Steele, who worked for Columbia, spearheaded the project. However, after the German finances backed out, Columbia put the production in a state of turnabout, meaning that they were done with the project, but it was open for another studio or producers to buy the rights. Then Columbia suffered some financial losses and still was asked to step down, but ultimately she resigned in 1990. She then became an independent producer for the Walt Disney Company, where she convinced the studio to pick up the Cool Runnings production, to which Disney agreed, and Cool Runnings was sledding back on track. It's really thanks to Steele's determination and passion for the project that we even got Cool Runnings in the first place. Number six, then budgetary issues nearly ended Cool Runnings. Cool Runnings budget that was allocated by Disney went astray and went over by $3 million. Disney weren't happy with this and shut the production down. However, producer Dawn Still was able to make cuts to the budget, particularly by scrapping one scene in particular which would have been very expensive to film, and thus the budget managed to get back down $3 million so Cool Running's production could resume. The filming locations consisted of Discovery Bay and Kingston in Jamaica, as well as Calgary in Canada. Incidentally, despite the fact that the Calgary scenes take place after the Jamaican scenes, for filming purposes, the Calgary scenes were shot first, with the Jamaican scenes being filmed as the second part of the movie shoot. So the film was actually more or less shot backwards. This was done to capture the Calgary snowy season. Still apparently worked as a second unit director as well as producer, where after the shoot she supposedly said that she never wants to direct again. I find it fascinating that the Calgary scenes were shot first, as Cool Runnings is about these guys from a hot tropical climate arriving at a cold icy one, when in actual fact it was filmed the other way around. Number 5. Casting when it came to casting the Jamaican bobsleigh team, the studio originally wanted Denzel Washington and Eddie Murphy, but they were too expensive. Cuba Gooding Jr., Tupac, and Jeffrey Wright had auditioned but weren't cast. Leon Robinson had been shown the script three years before filming had begun, and was eventually cast as Derrys one year before the shoot took place. Doug E. Doug, who played Sanka, was also aware of the script very early on in the production thanks to finding the script. He also wanted to play Senka, and was delighted when he got the part. Rao D. Lewis was hired to read lines with potential actors during their screen tests, but he was told that he was too inexperienced to audition himself, as the studio wanted a big name. But after lengthy searches that were going nowhere, the studio finally offered him to audition, where he impressed the executives and was cast as Junior. Lewis also said that he lied on his resume, saying that he had plenty of acting experiences in his homeland of Trinidad. Malik Yoba was cast as Yule, despite having no prior acting experience or agent. Yoba actually wrote the Jamaican bobsleigh chant song. It was something that he had originally written prior, but during his screen test, he pretended to improvise the tune, and the production was so impressed with it, it was recorded and used for the movie. Number 4, John Candy took a pay cut. When it came to the role of the bobsleigh team's coach, Irv Blitzer, originally Disney wanted Kurt Russell in the role, as well as Scott Glenn. However, John Candy really wanted the part and lobbied for it. Candy knew that Cool Runnings was going to be a hugely successful movie, as well as a special one, and really wanted to be a part of it. However, Candy's usual salary was higher than Cool Runnings' budget would allow, so he took a pay cut just so he could be a part of Cool Runnings. Despite the fact that after Cool Runnings, Wagons East and Canadian Bacon would be released, Cool Runnings was the last movie Candy actually completed, as the actor passed away the following year in 1994, leaving behind a great cinematic legacy. It kind of gives Cool Runnings a sad undertone in knowing that this was the last curtain bow for an on-screen legend, as well as a kind gentleman, husband and father. Rest in peace, John Candy. 
Number three, deleted scenes. There were several proposed scenes in Cool Runnings that were going to be filmed, but eventually weren't. One of these scenes actually caused the cast to protest as they really didn't want to film it. It was a scene that involved the characters putting a joint in a snowman's mouth. The cast was so against this, it was decided to drop the scene. One of Cool Running's writers, Tommy Swerdlow, revealed that he had written a scene where the Sanka character has sex with several female Scandinavian skiers, where he was then told to cut the scene out, which he did. Funny thing is, Cool Runnings is considered as a family-friendly movie. Had these scenes been put in the movie, then I see it being less Disney and more National Lampoons. These scenes involving joints and sexy times with skiers makes me think that the original script for Cool Runnings was a lot naughtier than the Cool Runnings that we got. Number two, getting approval from the real bobsled team. Given how Cool Runnings takes many creative liberties on the real life events surrounding the Jamaican bobsled team, it could have caused the real team to speak out against the movie upon its release. The real life team who consisted of Devin Harris, Dudley Stokes, Michael Wright, Freddie Powell and Chris Stokes all made a deal with Disney that they would not publicly speak badly about the movie on two conditions. One, the movie doesn't portray the team in a negative light. And two, it also doesn't portray Jamaica in a negative light. However, all fears were laid to rest as the team members saw some early cut scenes of Cool Runnings and were perfectly happy with what they saw. Now that the team liked the movie, it was a question of if the public would like it too. Actor Doug E. Doug predicted that the movie would be a moderate success, maybe pulling in around $50 million. Oh, how wrong he was. In a good way. Number one, the bobsled to success. Cool Runnings was released in October 1993 and exceeded everyone's expectations. It opened up at the number three spot in the box office, making over $68 million in the US box office and nearly $155 million worldwide, making it hugely successful, giving its budget of $17 million. The movie was loved and embraced by everyone and has since been regarded as one of the greatest sport movies of all time. Thanks to its humor and heartfelt moments, Cool Runnings garners great affection from viewers even to this day. I can vividly remember my parents taking me to the cinema to watch this when I was a kid and I absolutely loved it. Although the end scene where they crash and everyone does the slow clap really hit me in the feels and made me quite teary eyed. Yes, when I was a kid I could watch films like A Nightmare on Elm Street and The Shining no problem easy peasy poo. But that one scene of the bobsled team carrying the bobsled left me absolutely blubbering. <laughs> yeah. So what was it about this movie that caught on? Well, personally, I think because it's a movie about defying all odds, going against all the people that try to put you down and tell you that you can't do something or that you're not good enough. It's the ultimate triumph of the human spirit and determination, that anything can be done if you put your heart to it. And that is a wonderfully great and positive and powerful message. The bobsled team may have crashed in both film and in real life, but the dedication and determination they put into their dreams and goals made them all triumphant. Now I'm not really that much into sports movies, but I really do love Cool Runnings. Now it is kind of sad watching, knowing that it's John Candy's final film, but it'll be more sad to not watch it at all. So check out Cool Runnings, it's full of laughs and heart. Anyway, I'm Minty, and I'm just glad that no one's drawn a line down the middle of my head so I'll look like a butt. See ya!